Let's go. Okay. <laughs> my name is Jeremy Dager, and this is my wife, Julianne Dager. And we are church planners in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Going back about eight years, um, we were up there, Julianne and I, and I preached in my grandparents' church, and we had just planted Mercy Hill um, not even a year prior. And I remember just the wheels were spinning. I remember saying to Julianne, like, hey, what, what would it look like to, like, I don't know, plant a church, like, up here? And uh, I don't even know if I got the full sentence out. And she was like, no, <laughs> we're not moving to Canada. Um, and so I was like, okay, cool. cool. I'm glad we settled that. Um, and so the conversation just kind of stayed, you know, under the surface, I think, for the next seven years. Things were going well at Mercy Hill, and uh, man, God was just blessing, you know, what we're doing there. And, and um, you know, for me, you know, there was a, there's a lot going on and, and, you know, moving into the role of executive pastor. And I feel like I realized um, just how comfortable I had become and how much I valued the control that I thought I had over my life. Um, things were predictable. Um, things happened in a way that I felt like I could control. And I think the Lord graciously, but painfully, <laughs> began to not only identify that idol of control in my life, but he, he began to he began to carve it out. Growing concerns about the deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. Here's what we He preaches out of Isaiah 42, and, and he just he just kind of goes for it. And he just said, listen, from the intern to the executive, is your yes still on the table? In Isaiah 42, it just talks about God's name being glorified among the nations. And this idea that, man, we're, we're called to go wherever God has called us to go. And, and he just said, he just challenged us, like, is your yes still on the table? And, uh, and I'm, I'm in the back and I'm just like bawling because <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not. Like, Lord, I've taken it off. It's not on the table. And, uh, and man, it was just clear at that point. Like one of those moments in your life where it's just, there's such a clarity in terms of what God is calling you to do. And, and God was saying, this is it. I remember coming home that day and I was like all nervous because I was like, oh man, I just had this, I feel like just this clarity from God and, and how am I gonna explain that to Julianne? <laughs> yeah. And he came home and was like, hey, so I really think we need to start thinking about, you know, exploring going to Canada. And I was like, yep, let's do it. <laughs> And I think it was one of the shorter conversations that we had ever had about um, yeah. ministry and church planning and all of that. Yeah, I was both shocked at the duration of the conversation and also like, dang it, my <laughs> wife is more spiritual than I am. <laughs> Little did I know that God was doing something in Julianne's life to kind of cultivate, you know, her own heart. When Jeremy first had brought up ministry in Canada and I said no immediately, I was just really stirred to pray that God would change my heart and not that He would just change my heart into a willingness to go, but an actual desire to go. And that it wouldn't just be Jeremy's ministry, but it would be our ministry, that it would be something that like I was passionate about as well. And so in that process of praying over several years, I mean, it was not always an easy prayer because I didn't want to go. Um, and. It wasn't even that I was like, I don't want to go anywhere. It was like, I don't want to go to Canada, you know? Through praying, like, if this specific place is a place that you want us, put it in my heart, put that desire in my heart. And knowing that God is faithful to answer prayer and that He will do um, what is for best for His glory and for our good. And so putting that desire in my heart was for both of those. It was for my good and it was for His glory because now I'm not just following Jeremy um, along kind of begrudgingly of like, well, I'll be willing, but instead I am excited and I know that this is where the Lord is leading both of us. That, you know, really began the process for us of, okay, Lord, like, 
our yes is on the table. I'm open. Like I, I want to go where you're calling me to do what you're calling me to do. I don't want to dictate what that is. Like my yes is on the table and I want you to put it on the map. The most exciting life lived is a life lived for Jesus. You know, it's one of the things that we try to teach our kids, try to teach the kids at Mercy Hill. And I think what I started realizing was like, man, the, the most comfortable life lived, it, it, that's not a life lived for Jesus. Um, we talk about the most exciting life, that's a life that is fully open and willing to die to whatever sin that we need to die to, to go wherever Jesus is calling us to go. And it's not easy, but I think Paul's words have been just running around in my head a lot where he says, man, I, I consider it all rubbish, garbage, to the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus. And I think, man, is having a nice place to live, is that rubbish? No, not in and of itself. Is, you know, being comfortable, you know, financially, no, that's not, those are not bad things, you know? Um, but when you hold that up to the knowledge, the surpassing knowledge of Jesus and the desire for others to know that surpassing knowledge, it makes all of that other stuff look like complete rubbish. Thinking about what we want to teach our kids, and, and it's definitely a sacrifice that um, we are leaving, but it's a sacrifice that we're kind of giving them, um, where we're taking our kids out of their comfort. Um, and so as we wrestle with that, just knowing that the most compelling way that we can tell them the gospel, that we can share the gospel with them, is by letting them see it. We are not called to change our own hearts, but we are called to be faithful, to let God do it. Because that is what He's in the business of doing, is changing hearts. And it's not just for salvation, it is for every part of our journey as He is changing our heart. And I think we have to realize that not all the time does the Lord change our hearts overnight. That there are times where God flips a switch and our hearts are changed. And we see that in salvation, that it's one time and our heart is changed um, forever. But the little changes continue to happen over time and sometimes they happen and it's it's years and that and that was my experience in praying that God would change my heart towards a love for Atlanta Canada and I think we have to um, we have to grow in our own patience and and waiting on the Lord and not just saying like well my heart's not changed so I guess it's not the Lord's will but knowing that he will work at his pace and we just need to be faithful to continue to pray that he will work in us and if that takes 10 days if it takes 10 years be faithful in praying that he will do it we can see these stories and we can think wow like that just looks so easy you know or that man they make it look so easy and the reality is like it's not easy like it's not easy at all there's a lot of grief <laughs> um man we love we love <clears throat> what are you about to say we love mercy hill we love where we are okay. like it's not easy like we love we love greensboro like our best friends are here <laughs> <laughs> our life in so many ways has been immensely blessed by being here and yet like would we trade it to go where god is calling us to go because we ultimately know that like man it's worth it it's worth it that's a tough place to get to but man you pray that prayer and then you hold on and you watch what the lord will do in your life <laughs>